We gotta talk about Deadpool's inner voices, Superman's birthday, and comic book origin stories of supervillains. Play that bumper. On the video we did about Deadpool's inner voices, which you can check out right over there, I think the number one comment thread we had was about how the character of Dr. Bong relates into all of this. So kind of to summarize this really quickly, um, if Madcap was one of the voices in Deadpool's head, who was the other one? You might instinctually think, oh, it's just Deadpool's inner monologue. But a lot of people were insisting that the other one was a character called Dr. Bong. Not only that, but it was, uh, I said that Madcap was the white boxes, when really a lot of commenters were saying that Madcap was the yellow boxes and Dr. Bong was the white boxes. Now, as far as I can tell, this is not true. I asked you guys for some sources to this and you guys did not disappoint. You hit me up with a ton of comic books to check out that uh, apparently explained this, but as I read them, this information about Dr. Bong being a voice in Deadpool's head is nowhere in, in the sources that everyone uh, led me to believe that they would be in. And um, interestingly enough, one of the comics that was brought up a lot that I should check out for this source is Deadpool Annual number 13, which is literally the comic book that I talked about in the video and mentions nothing about Dr. Bong. And in fact, in that comic book, we see very clearly that Madcap is the white boxes, not the yellow boxes, as a lot of people were insisting. I don't know where this information comes from. I don't know why people are insisting that it's true because I keep checking sources. I can't find anything about it. But the fact that so many people are insisting that it's true makes me think that I'm missing something. So if I am, uh, please let me know. Please tell me more sources in the comments, um, I'll put right down here, we'll show all the ones that I've already checked out and have found nothing in. That way we don't get repeated sources. Um, if you can actually take a screenshot of it and send it to me on Twitter, that would be amazing. So I could stop, you know, frantically looking and kind of wasting time. But yeah, in summary, as far as I can tell, uh, Dr. Bong has nothing to do with anything. Speaking of Twitter, JakeRiv16 tweeted at me a picture from a comic I think is uh, from Teen Titans about um, showcasing very explicitly three characters who represent the id, ego, and super ego. It's Impulse, Superboy, and Robin. And I wonder how many other comic books explicitly state their characters as representing the uh, uh, Freudian model of, of personality. That's, I mean, if you have more screenshots of this stuff, please send it to me. I find this stuff fascinating. But my favorite comment on the Deadpool video has to go to Jordan D. White, a person who is actually working on Deadpool comics right now, which is super exciting. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, he tells this amazing story about his original pitch for the idea of why Deadpool has two inner monologues. In his pitch, he had this idea that every single comic book monologue inner voice box was actually not the character, but rather a symbiotic psychic creature that I guess lives in their brain which is so fascinating to me <laughs> and really, really, uh, it's really interesting. And uh, apparently the idea was that having two of these creatures inside of your head would be deadly to anybody else, but Deadpool has a healing factor so, you, so he can allow for those two fighting voices, whereas other people couldn't. Unfortunately, this never came to fruition and they went with the madcap idea. Still though, I think that is just so cool and I'm going to adopt it into my headcanon. Every single comic book caption box is a psychic creature. So Jordan D. White, you are winning this week's Nerd Sync No Prize. Congratulations, sir. It means nothing. It's nothing. In the video we did about Superman's birthday, Norman Miller and a few other people brought up the uh, Man of Steel miniseries, which shows that the rocket that Superman traveled to Earth in was actually a gestation pod of sorts. So he actually wasn't born on Krypton. He was born when he was taken out of the rocket on Earth. So he is a citizen of Earth. And so the day that he crash landed is the exact same day that he was born technically uh, which is really interesting to think about. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm just kind of trying it out. Maybe giving a little bit more time might grow on you. What do the rest of you guys think, though? Um, I don't know. Still, still playing with it. In the video we did about comic book origin stories, which was a lot of fun. You guys really liked that one. Uh, Mr. Dairyox555 leaves a really great comment 
um, talking about his take on origin stories, saying that they're a way to make a very powerful character relatable to us people who are most likely not super powerful like them, uh, which is a really good point that I didn't even that I didn't even think about. Yossi Berman brings up origin story fatigue, which is something that I very briefly touched on in the video. I had a big section written about it, but I ended up, I ended up cutting it out. Um, but yeah, I think the idea of origin story fatigue, uh, to kind of restate something that Kevin Feige said, is that people aren't really tired of seeing origin stories, they're just tired of seeing the same origin story, right? Like how many times do we need to see Batman's parents get killed. I think we get it. Uh, same with Spider-Man, like if they make a new Spider-Man movie, we don't need to see his origin again. Uh, and this was something that was brought up with the rumor that the Doctor Strange movie might not have an origin, but uh, Kevin Feige was saying, no, of course we're gonna do an origin. I mean, he has a crazy awesome origin, which I agree with, Doc Doctor Strange has a great origin. Um, yeah, so I don't really know how I stand on this idea of origin story fatigue. I will say that I think a movie like Deadpool, for example, did it very well, told the origin uh, in a very uh, different way than a lot of comic book movies uh, tell tell their origins. And I think it really paid off. I think, yeah, I would say maybe not, maybe we're not sick of origins, we're just sick of the same origins and also origins being told in the same way, if that makes sense. Ben Mead asks a really fantastic question that I actually struggled with while writing that video, uh, which is how long does an origin story last? Or, you know, what point does it end, essentially? Because we had gathered all that data about superhero movies. And this is something that I still don't really know the answer to. Like, take Captain America, for example. I have a really hard time trying to figure out what point of that movie does the origin story end. Is it after he gets injected with super soldier serum? Is it after he fights the first Hydra agent that he encounters? Is it after he goes on his first mission? Maybe the whole movie is an origin story and it stops when he wakes up in the present? I don't know, and it's hard to determine precisely when an origin stops. Is it just like, are we constantly having, or like, is, is, this, is this a part of or, my origin right now? I don't know, when does it stop? I don't know. I would love to know you guys' thoughts about this though, because I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I don't have an answer for it. The last comment we're gonna take comes from Comics Amino uh, from a user, The Comic Issue, who asks if the three types of origin stories apply to super villains as well as superheroes. And yeah, they absolutely do. Something that Rosenberg points out is that with super villains, a lot of it is a matter of perspective. So like Magneto could be considered a super villain to a lot of people, but to him, he's a hero because what he's doing, uh, he's, he's doing for the right thing. He's doing for the right cause in his own mind from his own perspective. And a lot of people can actually see that as well. You can even take a character like Poison Ivy, who Rosenberg says would be kind of an equivalent to an eco-terrorist, where we might say, oh, she's going way too far, she's obviously a villain, but to her, it's completely selfless, and it's it's she, she believes wholeheartedly that she's doing the right thing, and from her own perspective, she's not a villain. But then you get characters who are just pure evil, like Joker, who just care about chaos and destruction, and having fun. And I had this tangent at the end of the video that talked about how um, a same tragic experience could happen between a hero and a villain, but they would react in different ways. Like uh, Batman could take a tragedy that happened when he was a kid and turn it into a uh, fulfilling life, to turn it into a, this is a lesson, this is a thing that happened for a reason, so I'm going to try and make the world a better place. Whereas you get a character um, I can't think of any examples right now, but you know, like the classic villain who see, who, you know, something bad happens to them and they immediately go, well, clearly the world sucks. It's not doing me any favors. I'm just gonna be reckless and be greedy and do whatever I want because that's the lesson that I learned from this traumatic experience. So it's all about how certain people react to, you know, trauma or you know the ac accidents that happen, things like that that turn a character into a hero or a villain effectively. Boy, I hope that makes sense. Thank you guys so much for your comments this week. And hey, speaking of Comics Amino, this episode is actually sponsored by them. They are the largest mobile community for comics fans. They've been really great uh, in helping me get some videos out. We got a great video coming in the next few weeks that was made thanks to them. They're really great people, and they have a free app for iPhone and Android that you can download right now for free. Did I mention it was free? Because it's free. You can uh, click the links in the description below to check it out. And you can also follow me on there where I post stuff occasionally. It's all about comics fans getting together and sharing their reviews and theories and just general love, general love for comic books. 
Uh, it's a great place to hang out with like-minded nerds. So download it now and check it out. And if you missed the videos that we talked about in this here episode of Tales from the Comments, you can go ahead and click right here for the one about Deadpool's inner voices. It was a collab with Idea Channel. It turned out magnificently. I love it, and I love you guys for watching it. It was a lot of fun. And you can also click right here to check out the video about superhero origin stories. The three kinds of them, how to write a good superhero origin, why we're so invested in superhero origins. Lots of great stuff, guys. Go check it out. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, please do hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos we make for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that dive into the history, science, philosophy, and art behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics.